Um, so just do it from where you'd like, uh, go, from where you would. Do it, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because um, you're going to move this, right? You know what I like to have? I would like to have a lawn made of cigarettes, all grown up from the ground. And you know what I'd do? I'd go out, and I'd light the whole lot on fire. <laughs> And I lie right in the middle of it. Mm, and I'd smoke. Me lying in a lot full of lit up smokes. And then take that big inhale, remember, and bring it up and up, up, so we can see it. We want to see it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, good. Hi, I'm Maura Coldis, your host for Arts Delight. That was the scene of Ruth Lawrence directing a one-person play at the Gathering Place last fall. It shows just one of the many talents that Ruth has developed and nurtured in her many years in the entertainment industry. When we return, we'll have a look at some of her work and a chat as to how it all came about. We begin the segment of our show on Ruth Lawrence as she responds to the observation that she's more than just an actress. Uh, Ruth, when I think of yourself, I don't think of a person who just does acting. Mm -hmm. uh, just list off some of the things that you are involved in as an artist. Uh, well, in theater, I write, direct, perform, and produce uh, with my own theater company. And in film, I write, direct, produce, and perform as well. Uh, I think that's, and, and I also work behind the scenes in film uh, in other capacities a little bit too, like as a first AD, sometimes as a continuity person. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a long list, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, yeah, and of course, uh, I mean, uh, it, it can be a good thing uh, yeah. to be able to do that because one thing understands the other and then, you know. Like yeah, that, you know. exactly. And well, <clears throat> when did you start getting into theater? Uh, I grew up on the south coast in St. Jack's and I, I was never involved in theatre. We didn't have a theatre club, we didn't have theatre in our school. But I, um, I did one year at Memorial in which I, I knew that I would eventually go to theatre school but I didn't know what an audition was, I didn't know how to do it. And in that first year I was trying to feel myself out in, um, in St. John's and I learned a few things, went to see a few shows but really it wasn't until I applied to a school in Welland, Ontario and got accepted to do technical theatre, uh, that, that's when I started learning. So that's, oh my gosh, eight, that was 1985 that I first started school. And then I came back home after finishing that program and an acting program at George Brown in Toronto. And I, so I moved back here in 91 and I've been working professionally ever since. I've been really lucky. I, I've done very little else except work professionally in theatre and film. When, I, uh, when you say uh, that you came from St. Jack's, I don't know how big it is, but uh, were you intimidated people. coming in? To, well, there you go. <laughs> you know, there must have been an intimidation factor there somewhere along the line, or was it you had it in your mind, I'm going to do it? Uh, I did have it in my mind, and, I, and to be honest, for me, I grew up watching a lot of local television because at that time, um, when I was younger, NTV and CBC were producing their own shows here, so I grew up thinking that that's a job, that's, that's a job you can do. <laughs> and when I came back, by the time I came back from theater school, a lot of that had changed. There was not as much local production anymore. Um, and interestingly now, I can really see the resurgence of that again, like all those seeds that were sown, you know, kind of went dormant for a little while, and then with a lot of hard work from a lot of people, we now have a really thriving TV and film industry again. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So I worked a lot in theater in my early career because that's where the work was. And I still do work in theater, but there's more film opportunities to be had mm -hmm. these days. So you're still doing theater right now? Yeah, I am. I'm actually directing right now. Mm -hmm. I'm directing a show for Persistence Theater, brand new theater company. And um, I'm directing uh, one of my longtime friends and, and uh colleagues who I love, Bernie, Bernie Stapleton's play, Offensive to Some. Right. And uh, so you're rehearsing now for that? And yeah. Then, you know, and yeah. And it's interesting. It's a one-person show. I've always shied away from performing in one-person shows because I, there's something about the relationship um, 
for me anyway, as a performer with another human being. It's the, it's the exchange that I get excited mm -hmm. about. Uh, but I have to say, this show is so exciting and so intriguing to work on. I'm working with Miranda McDonald, who's an incredibly, incredibly capable, talented young woman. And she has no trouble filling that room on her own. Mm -hmm. And it's really exciting to watch. The light looks really good. This is just for the top of it. Because what we were getting when she was doing this was that this is all, yeah. And I think she's what? That's not the right No, she's and oh, it's not. But but she's also in the wrong place too because we're setting it up. Yeah. So I'm just gonna fix it for what works later. Yeah. Let's see. You actually, do it though. Oh, go up and do it. Yeah. 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 No, that's cool. So just do it from where you'd like, uh, go, from where you would. Do it, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because um, you're going to move this, right? Both theater and film are incredibly collaborative. I, I invite a lot of collaboration. I still, I still feel like, you know, I know it's my vision in the end because they're all working with me. Um, but it, there's nothing like it, really, like to kind of feel like you have a vision and, and you have the talents, immense talents of all these people to help you put it out there, to put it together and, and, uh, and present it. Yeah, it's, it's pretty extraordinary life, really. All right. And so where did you start off in theater, like in, in St. John's? Were you part of the, well, I know there was the like Rising Tide and Mummers and Conco and that yeah. stuff. You were in amongst that, presumably. Yeah, I did. I Actually, my first show that I did back here uh, and I say back here because I was traveling back and forth between Toronto and here when I was working. So my first show was at the Hall. It was a lunchtime theater show that, called Boatload to Ring Road. So it was a summer project. Right. And I met incredible, incredible people. Chuck Harriet, um, Lisa Porter, Sean Panting, Colin Kerrigan, Jonathan Moyes. It was an amazing group to work with. And we wrote a collective. And that was really my introduction to the collective process because there was so much collective work being done in Newfoundland and a lot at that time. Again, it also changed and we have more single playwright work, but at that time it was mostly collectives. And so I did that, met a whole lot of people and got very well connected. And then when I came back uh, the next time, I did a show with Rising Tide uh, and that began a long career of working with Donna Butt and her team. Uh, I still work with her today as a director and an actor. And then my show, the next show after that was back at RCAT again. So I, I yeah, worked, I worked, I've worked a lot with those two companies, but many other companies as well. And I've self-produced a lot of work too. So written and created my own stuff with other actor, writer, directors. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's been a... You were saying too shows. that you were going back and forth from uh, St. John to Toronto, or I, yeah, I, I was when I was in theater school. So I'd come home for the summer, and I always worked in between. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was when I was in school, I'd come back and work, go back up again, come back and work again in the summer times. Mm -hmm. But then once I moved back here in '91, I moved back not realizing I was moving back because I wasn't sure what the opportunities were here. Because mm -hmm. in the summers that I came home, I saw that things had changed a lot and. You know, things were a little bit of a, in a bit of a downturn to some extent. Uh, definitely in television, like everything had kind of moved off, and I thought, "Ooh, boy, that's going to change whether I am able to work or not." Mm -hmm. uh, but there was a lot of theater. Theater mm -hmm. was really going strong, and just kept growing and growing and growing. So that's what su what sustained me for most of my career. Yeah, but I was just wondering, like, uh, what was it like to go back to St. John's and go to Toronto and come back again? I know you're going to school, but what yeah. was the atmosphere up there and then come back here? Yeah, it was a pretty different industry. In mm -hmm. fact, when I was in theater school, uh, all my classmates talked about, like, what they were going to do after theater school. And I'd say, well, I think I might go home. And they went, there's, there's nowhere to work, you know, back home. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah. I, there is. I, I know there is. I know there's a, there's a, a place for me. Uh, but they never really believed it. And within, th I think within three years of graduating from, from um, George Brown, out of the 23 of us, there was four or five, maybe six or seven, who were still working, who had not moved into other, other areas altogether. Mm -hmm. And within 10 years, it was me and 
mm -hmm. one, one, two other people, yeah. So it was, so I, I know I made the right choice to come back here. I, I, I really, I haven't had to take another job outside mm -hmm. of theater and film. Right, That's yeah. incredibly lucky. Oh, I know, yeah. I know I'm lucky. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I'm just thinking too, I, I was talking to uh, Donna Butt recently, and the difference between uh, people, actors uh, of your ilk, mm -hmm. and actors and actresses nowadays, everyone nowadays seems to be plugged in, oh, I gotta get my resume, I gotta do this, do this. Yeah. And then, and Donna was saying, uh, in our day, everyone got passionate about it and just did it and yeah, loved it, you know? Yeah, that's so true, and, and that, that was the thing that I, I was, like it was a stark difference in between the Toronto reality and the reality I, I faced here. I think I came I came home after graduating. I think I had a hundred resume shots like in a plastic bag that I paid a fortune to get done. They didn't look anything like me. I was like, I don't know who that person <laughs> is. All made up, and, uh -huh. and I was like, okay, uh, I'll use these. And oh my God, within five years, I remember throwing out the whole pack of them. I thought, yeah, yeah. number one, they don't represent me. And number two, I didn't really need them. I mean, I needed photos, yeah. but not in the same kind of way. We'll be right back with Ruth Lawrence as she talks about how she eventually got involved with directing film. Hi, my name is Bill Coltus, author of the book, Revenge Finds a Home. The story opens up with a bird watcher walking through the woods and he comes across a body that has an arrow through its neck. Then enters Inspector Bob Lynch. It's a very complicated investigation, which goes from Newfoundland, British Columbia, Dakota, and down to Brazil. It's an intricate story, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it. If you want a copy, you can go to Amazon, Indigo Chapters, Flanker Press, or any fine bookstore in your area. Ruth Lawrence is very much a self-promoter, and she simply stands on her work to get that next entertainment gig. Nothing they can do for her. Her blood's gone bad. She's got no platelets. A film fit in and how how did that develop well when I f yeah so I can pretty much pin it down really like as a performer I was auditioning for everything that was coming along and I got a few roles I did um, the untold story of the Newfoundland suffragette uh, um, John Doyle's film extraordinary visitor I eventually got random passage and so I was on this side of the camera and I was, you know, I, I was getting some roles. And then when I turned 40, the thing that, that made the industry much like it, it was in Toronto is that work really started to dry up. It was just like this raging river that suddenly was a, became a trickle. And I could see it coming. I, I was like, oh, there's not quite as many roles coming my way. I don't see a lot happening this year unless I was creating it. And... Um, 
And so then I, st I did the NIFCO filmmaking course. I think that was in 97, so I'd done that quite a bit earlier, and, I, and I'd started to kind of play around with it. But then really, after I turned 40, I thought, I'm, maybe it's time for me to start telling some stories. And the film really felt like a, the medium that I wanted to work in in that way. I, I started writing and directing film before I started really getting into directing theater. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I cut my teeth on film directing, short short films, you know, exercises and stuff, um, way before I felt confident as a theater director. Mm -hmm. So it was, yeah, it was the visual storytelling that fascinated me, because we're amazing oral storytellers in Newfoundland, mm -hmm. but I just got, just got so entranced by the visual storytelling. Mm -hmm. See, seeing it here, watching absolutely extraordinary films. The, the Women's Film Festival opened my eyes to so much excellent work. Then the nickel came along, again, like bringing in all that work together, mm -hmm. putting it on the screen, and it, yeah, I just, I did catch that bug. There's no doubt about it. It was, mm -hmm. I, I just got entranced by the whole right. filmmaking world. Well, I'm just uh, fascinated by the fact that uh, uh, even before you got into it, you know you're going to get into it. Yeah, it's yeah, I did. A, it reminded me of, uh, I know this unusual parallel, of a hockey player knowing that the puck is going to go in the goal before he shoots it. Yeah. It happens sometimes, right? Yeah, that's and, right. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, uh, it's, uh, uh, you're, you just finished working on, on a film, didn't you, in Halifax? Right? I did. I finished working on my first feature film. Now, it wasn't a feature that I entirely directed, mm -hmm. but it was a really interesting experiment. I love the idea. So Latonia Hardery, who's a producer from here, producer and director, um, co-produced a film with Bill Nevin and Jay Dahl from Nova Scotia. And they started by reaching out to a number of writer directors or writers and directors uh, to see what they were interested in exploring when it came to rom-coms. So romantic comedy, because they I guess they looked around and said, there's not that much romantic comedy material that women are directing. So I thought that was really fascinating, actually, that, that we aren't really doing that much work. So I, so I was one of the people that they cho chose to reach out to. I submitted a script. They chose a number of scripts, and mine was one of them. Wow. And then they offered me the opportunity to direct it as well. So. It's called Hopeless Romantic, and it's six writers, six directors, not all writer-directors. And there's a spine that kind of pulls all the stories together, mm -hmm. and then the, the individual stories are told within that story. Mm -hmm. So it's been, been a great, incredible experience. We'll be right back with Ruth Lawrence. Thanks for staying tuned. In the last segment of our show, Ruth Lawrence talks about her involvement with the Nickel Film Festival and her social activism. It's been an education. Besides, uh, you know, a, a good kind of part-time job, it's been an education in, in filmmaking way, too. Yeah. Well, I mean, we show between 50 and 55 films a year, but we watch over 200. Mm. So. You know, through the nickel, I've watched about 14, 1500 oh my God. short films, some, you know, mm -hmm. a number of features, but that is an education. You, if you're not watching films, you're not learning how to make films. Mm -hmm. So that was a real, I really marked that as being part of my education as a filmmaker because I went to theater school, but I didn't go to film school. Mm -hmm. And I learned most of what I know about filmmaking through being on the set on this side, performing in front of the camera and being very curious and interested in what's going on behind. <laughs> nice. um, and, then, and then watching films.
decorate my lover's wedding band. Now I'm good as gold. Ruth, I want to talk to you about uh, your, let's say, uh, if nothing else, your social activism. Mm -hmm. But I mean, uh, you know, there's more to being an artist in Newfoundland and <laughs> practicing your art. Yeah, because it is. almost seems like it's got to be defended too, right? You yeah. Know? But I mean, uh, you know, it's always on the cusp, you know, something's going to be cut and you're, you're out there saying, no, 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 no. Yeah, it's true. Uh, like, any thought that arts and culture is disposable to me, I, I just have... I, 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 I have no appreciation for that viewpoint because to me, art and culture, is, that's what makes us human. Like the fact that we do these things and we're curious and we're empathetic and we are always trying to understand each other. That's, that is the state of humanity, hopefully. I think it is anyway. And for me, of course, I have to defend that because I truly believe that that's why we're here. That's why we as artists were born to, to, to look at the human condition and, and try to figure it out. And, and somehow if you're, if you're in this world and you're not in this world to make it better, then why are you in the world? You know, I, I think that's, that's what drives my activism is just the, the need and the really strong desire to feel like making it a better place and not just for me, making it a better place for everybody. And I think that it's not just me. I, I, I have a lot of fellow artists who feel that same way. And, and I actually, I say artists, but I have a lot of fellow human, human beings mm -hmm. that feel that way. And yeah. I feel like I'm surrounded uh, by people who do care about other people. And that's, that is what drives me. And mm -hmm. I know empathy is a big, part of the work I do. That's what it's about. It's, mm -hmm. I, if you're not empathetic, you're not really gonna be a very good actor. You gotta mm -hmm. be able to put yourself in someone else's shoes mm -hmm. in order to be able, and you gotta be interested in, in fitting into those shoes. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't have that curiosity and that drive to know how the other person lives, then, you know, that's, I don't, I don't really understand where you come from as an artist, I guess. So mm -hmm. that's where I come from. Ruth has given us a lot to think about. Hope you enjoyed the show. See you next week.
have a comment about this program, we'd love to hear it. Email or call us or send us your feedback through social media. You're watching Rogers TV St. John's. Looking for the best way to get the Major League Baseball games you want to watch? Rogers Super Sports Pack has you covered. With MLB Extra Innings, you'll have